Hey, welcome back to Carm 3D on the Tube. It's been a long time. I've missed you. Uh, why didn't you call? Let's see. I am working in silo today. Here's a model. I'm just finishing up here. Uh, this is not going to be for animation. It's just going to be for like a, a sculpture, part of a logo. And as you can see, it only really was meant to be looked at from one angle. But what I'm going to be doing now is demonstrating the nifty, super cool, keen UV tools in Silo 2. Uh, the UV tools of Silo 2 are actually the reason why I bought the program. And then I later found out that uh, Silo is actually a pretty awesome modeler too. And I did model her in Silo 2. But... Um, I'm going to be taking her into ZBrush for some refinement and before I do that I want to lay out the UVs. So let's do that. Let's uh, first of all turn off the subdivisions and go into edges mode. If you look down here you can see I got point, edges, polygon, multi, and object picking modes. So I want to pick edges. This particular model was not meant to be like, you know, a posed animated ball object. As you can see, I've I've kind of filled in these these holes. It's all one seamless area. So, what I'm going to do is uh, just start selecting seams that I want to be selecting edges that I want to be seams. And I'll start over here. While I'm doing this, I will say that I exported this model as an OBJ and brought it into Lightwave and used the Polygon statistics. I'm going to undo some of these high selections. By the way, to undo, to unselect things, you use Control and Shift. You hold both of them down and click on it, and it's gone. Anyway. I brought the uh, I exported this as an OBJ file and I brought it into Lightwave uh, because in Lightwave Modeler you have the Polygon Statistics tool with the W key and that way I can tell it to select objects that have more than four polygons because I when I'm working in ZBrush can't be having more than four polygons so I went back and forth a little bit from uh, Lightwave to Silo, bring it into Lightwave, check to make sure there are no five-pointed polygons, and then back into Silo. And at this point, the, the object has, does not have any five-pointed polygons. Now I'm not actually going to be doing any texture painting with this model. It's just for uh, displacements. So really the only use for the UVs is for ZBrush. So I, I technically could make a very abstract looking UV map. That's why I'm I'm cutting right across the chest here. It doesn't really matter. I'm just uh, pulling out sections that were that will unfold nicely. I could theoretically bring it into ZBrush and use ZBrush's UV tools to basically do a, a kind of like an atlas unwrapping, but. Um, I'm picky about these things. I like my UVs to be pretty, even though I'm the only one that's going to see it. So, there's a nice piece there. Mark UV seams. So now, once I deselect, 
Oh no. These were supposed to be blue. Alright, I think I've done something wrong. But uh, I'll pause the video while I figure out what happened. Okay, I'm doing a little exploring here. It looks like I might be onto the problem. I just did a a new unwrapping and it looks like there are like uh randomly placed UV edges. So I think that might be like a little glitchiness in the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to select all of the edges and then unmark UV seams, just kind of clear it. And let's see if I uh, recreate UVs. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay, so here it's done a cleaner unwrap. There are still some weird edges. I can see this one's blue, this one's blue. Maybe you can't see it in your video version, but I'm going to do this twice. I think, if I remember correctly, you have to do that twice. Unmark UV seams, unmark UV seams, and then re-unwrap it. Okay, now there are no blue seams. The only blueness is along the edges of the model where it should be. So now I will once again select my edges, and I will do that while the video is paused. One quick thing before I finish this up. I just want to show you if I select one edge and then I hold my shift button down and double click on an adjacent edge it just selects a whole loop like that so that just saves right time right there. Okay I've lined out a nice area here that I want to mark as an edge. Hopefully it will work this time. Mark UV seams. Now I hit the spacebar to go back to my quad view. It looks like they are indeed marked. Uh, oh, I just realized why we're not seeing it here. It's a display option. Options here. Show UV seams. I had that turned off. So now it shows it. Very nice. So you can see there's the UV seams that I defined but also there's the automatic UV seams along the edges of the model. So now we are making forward progress. I'm going to continue defining my seams and see you again after the end of the other edit. Okay, I've gone through and marked all my seams up. I just wanted to uh, point out a couple of things I did. Because this is only going to be seen from one side, I've pretty much marked out the back as one giant piece, and then when I do the UV map, I'll make that quite small because uh, that doesn't need a lot of resolution in the in the displacement map texture. And uh, on the hands, you can see I've well, I have the papers hidden right now, but you can see I have a blue line going around the middle of the fingers there. So, it's pretty straightforward. There was a couple of really cramped spaces that I had to be very careful of there, like in here. But other than that, it wasn't too difficult. I've separated the nose and the eyes so I can pull them out flat. She's ready to go. Are you ready? I'll take that for a yes. Okay, I save the object, save the scene rather, and let's unwrap it again. There we go.